Hello and welcome to my meditation. My name is Deborah Baker and I am so grateful that you have joined us for a little while. You know, even if you're only with us for a couple of minutes, you deserve this break from your day, don't you? So let's get started. As usual, let's begin with our three nice, really deep breaths. I wish you were here because that candle that I have on screen smells amazing. And isn't it funny because I've had lots of people say they don't care for the, the aroma, but it just really trips my trigger. And we are such individuals, aren't we? Gosh, thank goodness. Oh, so let's begin with our three nice, really deep breaths. Hold it for a second and let it out really slowly. <clears throat> and this time breathe in a little more deeply and let it out a little more slowly. Really fill up your lungs. And then release it really slowly. And now take the biggest breath you've taken all day. Really fill up your lungs, top and bottom, front and back, left and right. Ah, oh, and then let them out, re let the air out really, really slowly. So I seem to be encountering a lot of people <clears throat> being extremely hard on themselves lately. And so I want to talk about who are you? But before we do that, let's relax our bodies. So let's imagine when you dip a sponge in water and you just put the corner in or just the side in and you watch the water kind of soak up into the sponge. Let's imagine that that's what we're doing with our bodies with relaxation. So imagine it's your feet and your ankles your lower legs, your knees, just absorbing, taking in that sense of relaxation. You know, and once the sponge is wet, it can't be dry at the same time. So uh, let, allow yourself, let yourself relax. <sighs> yeah, and, and, and then feel it move through your knees into your upper legs. Oh, yeah. Just notice how heavy your feet and your legs have gotten. And then feel it begin to move up. Daisy. Move up into your tailbone, your pelvic floor. Imagine your entire pelvis now has absorbed that sense of relaxation. So your hips, your lower torso, your pelvic floor, your tailbone, your lower back. Moving up into your midsection beginning to move up your rib cage and as it does feel also your hands you know the sponge effect in your hands your wrists your lower arms make sure that your entire body is in a position to relax so that's supported um, none of your muscles having to to be flexed, and so your muscles are in a neutral position, neither flexed nor stretched, but just neutral. Your hands, your wrists, your lower arms, your elbows, your upper arms, <clears throat> and then feel that relaxation moving up your body, uh, moving up through your chest, your shoulder blades, your collarbone, and all of it coming together at your shoulders. Feel your shoulders sink down a little. If you want to do a little neck circle to just kind of release your neck. And then oh, your the rest of your vertebrae in the back of your neck, the sides, the front of your neck, your jaw, all the way through your head. All the way to the crown of your head. Feel your face lose all expression. <clears throat> and just let go. It's 
So, who are you? You are a, an infinite being having a human experience. And much of our lives are focused on the human experience, which is limited and different. Each person's is different and um, often judged by others and ourselves, right? But what happens if we suspend judgment of our human selves and remember the infinite beings that we are? The first time that someone told me that there was a spark of the divine in me, just a spark, that was as much as I could accept because I felt so limited, so uh, inferior, so lacking. And slowly my higher power worked in, through, and as me to bring about first the knowledge that the truest part of us is the infinite, is God expressing. We are God expressing. There isn't just, you know, one or a few beings who've ever walked the earth who are God expressing. Every single one of us is God expressing. And I'm not trying to sell that idea to you. Because you, I, I am a firm believer that people believe what they are comfortable believing and it is not my job to change anyone's mind. <coughs> However, if you are open to that idea that you are truly a divine being, I invite you to just check in right now. We'll have a little bit of silence for you to just look and see where you, where you land on that. Are you like I was initially where just maybe a tiny bit of me, maybe one cell was God and the rest was this, this failing human? Or you may be somewhere in the middle where it's like, yeah, but there's a lot of me that blocks God, that, that doesn't believe, that, that can't be accept that I am truly the infinite expressing. So let's just check in with ourselves. talked to someone who had been a caregiver for their loved one who was dying and all she could see were the times when she failed him, where she didn't understand what he was trying to tell her, um, <clears throat> didn't understand what he wanted or, you know, I'm sure there had to have been times when she lost patience because caregiving for someone who, you know, can't take care of themselves is hard. Even a mother of a, a newborn, you know, we love them with all our hearts and yet it is hard to be completely responsible for another human being. And yet we don't have to land in shame or guilt. And how do we release shame and guilt? <laughs> the infinite presence, and the infinite presence is already you. So you already have inside of you, <clears throat> as you, everything you need to release the guilt and the shame for not being perfect. And, and a perfect human being doesn't exist. So it was a silly idea to begin with. So let's let go. Let's allow the infinite being moving through, in, through, and as us, the one presence, the one power, to free us from this useless guilt and shame. Daisy? Daisy. So 
to allow the infinite spirit to free us from all of our erroneous ideas. We were taught them by well-meaning people. You know, I, I, I really feel that most people who say something um, hurtful or say something demeaning, most of them have a, a good heart. They're saying it, quote, for our own good or to help us because I know if you realize this about yourself, you would change. And I invite you to just let them go and allow the God in you to guide your heart, to free your heart. And let's imagine what it would feel like if we truly believed that we are God expressing right here, right now. What would it feel like? I suggest you invite the God, the divine energy, the oneness moving in through and as you to expand your imagination. What would it feel like to fully truly, deeply know that you are the one presence and the one power expressing right here, right now. Maybe just for a second for you to believe it, to know it, just for a second. might your day go if you didn't criticize yourself? to one of my daughters when she, when one of, when they were little and she was being really hard on herself and I said, "Hey, nobody talks to my little girl that way." And it's interesting because sometimes other people appreciate us way more than we appreciate ourselves. And I'm talking about the little things. I'm talking about, say you sleep later than you intended, to say, thank you, God, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I got the sleep that my body needed. And if you have an idea of you know, the best things for you to eat and, and you fall short one day, just say, okay, tomorrow's another day. You know, the, God moving in through and as me is still there. Nothing can ever stop us from being one with divine love. Nothing could ever stop God from loving us because we are divine love. We are love expressing. 
you are, how can somebody stop you from being what you are at your very core? They can't. There's a quote that I learned a long time ago. Actually, I heard a paraphrase of it and I looked it up. And it is, uh, and, and I'm paraphrasing, but it's, God cannot be found in ourselves through a process of addiction, addition, but rather through a process of subtraction. And what do we subtract? We subtract our self-criticism. We subtract being hard on ourselves. We subtract feeling bad about ourselves. We let go of regret. We shall not regret the past. And we acknowledge that we are having a human experience that is full of twists and turns and bumps and divots and all sorts of things. And we embrace it all. Now I've had this cast on for three weeks now and I just keep reminding myself that it's a miracle that somebody came up with this idea for this surgery to replace the cartilage in my thumb with a piece of tendon from my arm. And I have every intention of it being a 100% successful surgery and being so much better than it was before. And I make diligent effort to focus on the healing, that the healing presence is in me it is the divine presence moving in through and as me and you that is healing us. Whatever it is we might need to be healed, whether it's our hearts, our emotions, our physical bodies, our memories, whatever it is, we are one with all that is. Who are you? You are God expressing, which means you truly are whole and perfect exactly as you are. Take a deep breath and really take that in. I am whole and perfect exactly as I am. I invite you to, to fully, fully take that in. You truly are whole and perfect exactly as you are and you are having the ideal human experience you came here to have. You're not off course. You're, you're not making mistakes. You're not, a, you're not a mistake. You're whole. You're not broken. You may feel broken, but you are not broken. You are perfect. The, the human experience is divine, defined in a lot of ways, and one of them is imperfect. Okay, so the human experience is imperfect, but that doesn't mean that you are. You are whole and perfect exactly as you are. And the infinite presence moving in through and as me honors and recognizes the infinite presence moving in through and as you. In other words, namaste. Three more weeks. <laughs>